Okay, so today we're going to be talking about creating content. And this is just going to kind of go through some tips uh, just to hopefully make your life easier. Um, making content for your brand can, can be very overwhelming, especially when you are a small business and you are just one person. Um, so hopefully these tips will help you out. So first of all, if you haven't uh, seen me before, I am Kelly Green. Um, I'm the marketing and creative manager with Halstead. I've been there since 2017. Um, and prior, I was actually a customer. So me and my husband are both metalsmiths and we owned a small jewelry business, um, which opened in 2014. And we had a small little gallery. Um, you can see here where we carry other local um, craftsmen, um, Things such as other jewelry artists, um, housewares, um, textiles. Uh, we did paintings and drawings and posters and all different things. So it was super fun. Um, we loved it. And um, we ended up having to close in 2018, um, kind of when we had our kids and stuff. But I was able to transition into Halstead. So I'm so excited that I got to stay in the jewelry business. Um, prior to that, all of, um, you know, most of my working years were spent in retail and retail management. Um, and that's kind of where I got to learn the business side of things. Um, I do have a BA in art from ASU. Um, I didn't major in metals, um, but I did take small metals and jewelry classes while I was there. And then my very first introduction um, to jewelry making was I actually went to a public high school in Mesa, Arizona, and they um, offered a jewelry class. So um, that was my very first exposure to it. So again, I'm Kelly with an I. Um, my email is at the bottom at housedeadview.com. If you have any questions, um, I'm always uh, ready to help. So reach out. Okay, so to get started, what is content? So obviously, if you just look up the definition of content, um, it doesn't really relate um, to marketing. So just the plain definition is what is inside or included in something. Um, so when it's applied to like publishing or art um, or communication, um, it's kind of just the information and experiences that are directed towards an end user or audience. Um, so even there, it's still kind of vague, like what, how do, what is content marketing? What is the content um, when it comes to, to putting your brand out there? So um, I kind of picked different little uh, parts of um, descriptions of content marketing um, from Google search. And this is kind of the best description that I came up with um, when I think about it. And obviously, um, just a disclaimer. So when you're creating content for your brand, you're going to want to know your target customer first, um, because all of the content you are creating is going to be um, be tailored to your, your, your target customer. So um, what I came up with was content marketing is a strategic marketing approach focused on creating and distributing value, valuable, relevant, and consistent content to attract and retain a clearly defined audience. Um, and obviously your end goal um, with marketing, with your business in general, is to get people to buy from you. So um, ultimately you, the end um, action is you want, you want someone to make a purchase. Um, so that's what we're going to be talking about today, how you can make content, um, for your small jewelry brand um, and some tips to make it not, not so overwhelming. So when we're thinking about content, um, these are a bunch of different things um, you know, that you can create to help, help um, build your brand and market your brand. So, you know, I think there's like 12 right there. On top of that, you know, even a lookbook, a catalog, a wholesale line sheet, a postcard, a flyer, um, that you create for an upcoming trunk show or for a craft fair you're attending. Um, those are all pieces of content content um, that you can create for your brand. Obviously, some are more in depth and can maybe be more valuable or hold more weight than others. Um, obviously, you know, blogs and guides are going to take longer than just a social media post. Um, but this is the whole realm um, and, and everything that you can um, create. Um, and that's what we're going to be talking about as content today. Things that you can post on social media, put in your emails, things you're putting out there to your customer or prospective customers um, to get them to know your brand. So these are the three sections we're going to go through today. Um, the power of planning, um, maximizing your reach with the content you create, and then recycle, reuse, reduce your stress. Um, that's kind of my favorite section. So here we go. 
the power of planning. Um, so especially when you're starting out um, running your small small business, it's usually just you. And I feel like a lot of people look at other brands, whether they're jewelry brands or other small businesses, and it, they think to themselves, you know, how in the world do they have all these gorgeous photos of their product? Um, how are they sending monthly monthly emails? Like, what am I even supposed to put in there? Um, who has the time to post on social media every day? Who has the time to think of all these, you know, funny little quotes or the copy they put on their social media posts? And just how how is one person doing it all? How does one person manage four different social media platforms plus their website plus you know? responding to emails, making the jewelry, um, you know, obviously you are wearing 50 plus hats um, as a small jewelry uh, business owner. So I think these are things that kind of um, people think, how in the world are you doing this? And they're really, it, it can be done by one person and, and really is they have a plan. Um, if you don't have a plan, it, it, you're just going to get more stressed out <laughs> um, as things pile up and you think of all of these, all of your to-do lists. So um, if you were able to attend the Jewelry Business Forum, you may have seen my presentation on creating a marketing strategy. So this slide is actually pulled from that presentation. Um, and I think the best way to kind of start out with a marketing strategy and thinking about how you're going to create your marketing content is with a... Um, a timeline. I like to do a 12 month timeline. So obviously we're the last day of March. Um, so you could start with April through next March and just even putting 12 squares on a piece of paper and just really um, short descriptions of what you want to accomplish. You know, in April, you want to do a photo shoot. In May, you want to write your first blog. Maybe you want to do a blog every quarter. So that will go in every quarter on your on your timeline. Um, you can kind of see here all your marketing tasks, including photography, email campaigns, social media posts, blogging, events, website updates. Um, the only thing I added to this slide is um, before I wasn't saying creating content. I was just listing out all of these things. Um, so really breaking, making that timeline is, is how you're going to create content to put out there to promote your business. And again, this 12 months um, is just a general guide to follow. Um, once you're gonna break down your tasks into um, month, quarter, and then ultimately your weekly tasks, um, and those are gonna have way more detail. So I'm gonna show you an example of breaking down a task, um, you know, maybe next month, April, you wanna do your photo shoot. So that's on the calendar. Um, but now we need to make a more detailed plan for the day of the shoot. So I'm going to show you this example now. So when you think about planning a photo shoot, um, and it does not have to be uh, with a paid photographer, it does not have to be with a fancy camera, this can be done with your cell phone. Um, we have some great blogs um, and tips for shooting jewelry on your smartphone. Um, our graphic designer and photographer Janelle also did a presentation about taking photos on your smartphone. So this this can be just you planning this um, with, um, with your own phone. So, but you need to have a plan going in. So obviously the time and place um, you're gonna be taking these photos. You wanna think, how is the lighting going to be? What time of day am I shooting in the morning, at night? Um, will I need extra lights? What do I need to bring with me? Um, you're also gonna to wanna to think about like, do you have a theme? Um, is this for your spring collection? Do you wanna have flowers there? Are there going to be models? Um, what product are you shooting? Is this gonna be your best sellers? Is this just gonna be a shot of your latest one of a kinds. Um, so have that in mind ahead of time. And then how many shots do you wanna get from the shoot? Um, you know, if you're planning a photo shoot once a month or once a quarter, um, you know, once a month, you might wanna be getting 30, 30 to 40 um, photos from your shoot. Um, and I know that can seem like a lot. And even if you have a small collection of jewelry, if you're only, you know, have eight pieces to shoot, to get to 40 photos is actually really, um, can be really easy. You know, um, you do a group shot, you do four of the pieces at a time, two of the pieces at a time, and then individual shots and kind of switch up um, the layout, the angles. Um, also, you're gonna wanna be thinking about um, where you're going to be posting these because that will determine the formats too. Obviously for Instagram, you want squares. 
Um, the photos used on this slide are um, shots for our summer campaign. Um, so obviously we got the props, the greenery, um, we wanted the yellows and blues, and uh, we shot this all together. And this, you will see this on our social media um, over the summer. So just definitely planning ahead is going to make you get the most out of your photo shoot. If you, you know, wake up one morning and you're like, oh my gosh, I haven't posted on social media in a week, I need some photos, um, and you kind of rush and put something together, like, yes, that can work, and you can get a few photos from that, um, but if you didn't plan ahead, you, there's no way you're gonna get 30 shots. Um, so think about planning. Um, you know, if you aren't used to, to kind of having a plan and due dates, it might be a little rough in the beginning, but I promise once you start doing it, it's really going to help you out um, and actually, you know, save you a lot of time. Um, so you want to get the most out of, out of a photo shoot. So you really need to think about all these things. Where can all these photos be used? How can they be used? Uh, what platforms am I, am I posting them on? So this is how you plan the shoot. So then after the shoot, you are also going to need to do some things. Really, being organized is also going to save you a lot of time. Um, naming each photo and then saving to labeled fol folders. Um, even social media now tra um, tracks SEO through tags and names of your files, of your photos, um, and it'll just make it easier for you. You know, if this photo um, on my slide here is named um, Onyx Collection, to 2020 so I know what it is um, and then if it's also saved within a folder um, you know named my lookbook for 2020 I'm going to be able to find it a lot quicker um, and be able to access it and then also those tags and the name of your photo is already there you know you're not scrolling through months and months of photos looking at photos named IMG 00782 um, that doesn't mean anything to you um, and, and it's, it's not going to help you. So one of the things I suggest that um, will just save you so much time and so much stress is to look into a scheduling platform for social media. Um, I've used Tailwind in the past. I've used Later. This is, these are platforms that you can connect all of your social sites on. So your Instagram, your Facebook, your Pinterest, your Twitter, um, whatever you're on, and you can go in and it kind of looks like a calendar view. You upload your photos into there and then you place them out on the calendar and then they automatically schedule for you. This can save you so, so much time. Um, you could schedule one day a month, one day a week and go in and, and, and schedule out. Um, obviously, you'll still need to be on your platforms to answer questions, you know, comment back and forth and talk to your customers, potential customers. Um, but you won't have that extra stress of every day thinking or every other day thinking, oh my gosh, I need to post. I don't have anything to post. I can't think of what I'm posting. Um, you can just get ahead of the game and you have your, your next month planned out and it's just one less thing to stress about. Um, and these platforms usually aren't very expensive, um, like 25 bucks a month. If you don't wanna do a scheduling um, social media platform, you can just also you know, put calendar reminders you know, every Monday, Wednesday, Friday um, that you need to post on Instagram. And an easy way if you do have Instagram and Facebook, if you haven't figured out, you can link those accounts together because it's all under the same umbrella now. Um, so you can post to Instagram and also have that post to your Facebook. I suggest doing different content if you can, um, but that's an easy way to, to, to get two posts with less time. Um, so also getting dates on the calendar for your next newsletter or email blast to your customers. Um, you know, some people get um, overwhelmed. Like, what am I gonna write in an email? And today, I feel like the copy of your email isn't as important. It's almost more visual, and then you want to have links to get them to your website or to get them to your social pages, wherever you want them to go. So even just writing a few, you know, a subject, a cute subject line, a little intro, adding three or four photos, and a paragraph of copy about what's happening in those photos, that's enough, that's great. Um, it gets people to remember your brand, remember your name, and maybe see some of your um, new collection. So also think after the shoot, where else can these photos be used? You know, obviously they could go on your website, they can go on your blog, all of your social pages. Um, and just get them anywhere that they could go. You know, if you have a personal Facebook too, maybe you can just tell your close friends, hey, I just did a new photo shoot, check it out and send them to your business page.
So again, due dates. Um, this slide is also from building your marketing strategy. Um, get due dates on your calendar. Uh, you know, you get your 12 month timeline and then break it down to monthly and then in your monthly have due dates and hold yourself accountable. However you do that. I love checklists. I um, fill up my Outlook calendar. So I have digital reminders. I also have a big paper calendar on my wall that I handwrite tasks in. And at the end of the day, I cross off. I really like checklists. Somehow that motivates me and makes me happy. So find out um, what's satisfying to you and whatever helps you um, get through get through your due dates. So now you've created um, this great piece of content. You've planned it out. You know you have all these beautiful photos. Um, maybe you have this great blog article. Now you want to maximize your reach. You want sent out to as many people as possible. So how are we going to do that? So obviously you want to get the most mileage out of every piece of content you create. So we're going to think about all the places we could promote, post, and share. Um, and then also, would anybody else be in your network, in your community, be interested in sharing this content? Um, it never hurts to reach out and networking um, as a small business owner, you want to be doing constantly. And then also, um, are there opportunities for collaborations or cross promoting when creating content? So biggest thing kind of talked about before, promote, post and share everywhere. You have all of these social pages. It just does you a disservice to not take the time to post the content to all of them. Um, you know, you will have customers, potential customers, followers that follow you on a few of your social handles, um, or you might, you know, someone might just only follow you on Instagram and they're on your subscriber list, or they only follow a certain um, board of yours on Pinterest and that's it. Um, so there's people that are going to overlap and then there's people who are not going to overlap. So you want to make sure you're posting it everywhere um, so you can maximize your reach. So I wanted to go through a little example of 10 ways to um, promote a new blog post. And this, you know, if you don't have a blog, um, this can be, you know, a new lookbook. Um, if you're more individuals, uh, a, a new Pinterest board, um, think of it as any piece of content. So we're going to go through 10 ways um, to promote it. So obviously, first, your Instagram grid post. Um, so maybe you wrote this, um, maybe you have a nature inspired um, storyline, you love the outdoors, you know, a lot of your pieces are inspired by um, different places you've hiked, different flowers you've seen, um, just different things in nature. Um, so your latest blog post is about all of the hiking trails you have done recently, and maybe you live in Utah, so Utah hiking trails. Um, so first on your Instagram, a grid post is a post that shows up on the grid in your little square. Um, so first you wanna, wanna post a, a photo of your blog cover. So that's your first promotion just on your regular um, Instagram grid post. Now you're gonna share that post into your story because some people may see your story and not see your grid post. You are at the mercy of all of these algorithms. Um, so definitely share it to your story and you can you know, just do the share from the grid to the story and maybe put a cute little um, icon gif on it and then say new blog alert. Also really quick on your phone, you can you know, flip your camera. This does not have to be a big production. It can just be a real short video of you talking about your new blog article like hey guys kelly here i just finished my new article about the hiking trails i did this last year in utah they were so beautiful see all my photos see the jewelry i wore and how i was inspired by these hikes that's as long as it needs to be um, and post it to your instagram tv so number four to promote um, email your subscribers I feel like people forget about their email lists. People gave you their emails and said, yes, please email me. So do it. Um, they, they, you know, if they follow your brand, they like you, they like your jewelry, they're going to be interested in what you're interested in. Um, so an email to subscribers, new um, blog just post, posted, um, add a few photos in from, from the blog, a paragraph about it, and then obviously link to your blog. 
So now we've done some Instagram posts, we emailed our subscribers. So now let's post on Facebook. Um, so a lot of people have their business page on Facebook and then they also have a personal Facebook and then they're also in a lot of groups. So post on all of them. Um, usually when you post a link to your blog, it'll pull your cover page, um, your cover image, but make sure there's a link. Um, people will want to click on the link from your Facebook page. Don't just post a photo and say new blog without the link. Um, Facebook, you definitely want to make sure you have your link there. So that was five ways. So another cool way to promote a new blog post is to create a Pinterest board around it. So obviously you're going to post some of your photos um, from the blog, from your Utah hiking blog. Um, you're going to want to post some of your jewelry photos in there and then also pin other people, um, other people's pins to this board, make a really nice, beautiful Pinterest board about it. So now you've also linked your blog to your Pinterest. Um, another thing you can do is pull a quote from the blog and create a graphic around it. Um, maybe you use one of the pretty photos from your hike and you put some text over it. Um, and maybe just one of the little, a little quote or an inspirational thing that came to you um, that you put in your blog. So now you've created another graphic um, to promote to promote the same piece of content. Um, you can post it on Instagram and then also post on your business Facebook page. Finally, you can pull a photo from your blog. So you're not using the cover photo now and just post to your Instagram and Facebook story, have you read our latest blog? Um, and all of these 10 ways to promote can be over a week or two weeks of time. Um, and then finally, number 10, now let's email your subscribers again, but this time we're gonna flip it and say, have you checked out my new Pinterest board? Um, and maybe use some, um, some photos from the board, some photos from Pinterest, maybe other people's you pinned and promote it that way. So to you, maybe you're like, oh my gosh, no one wants to read this blog 10 times. No one wants to hear about it 10 times, but really you're the only person that knows you promoted it 10 times. Um, like I said prior, a lot of your followers don't follow you on every social platform. Um, you're also at the mercy of an algorithm, so you don't know if they're actually seeing all of all of your posts in the first place. And maybe that first email, you know, you sent out to your email subscribers, maybe, you know, I opened it and I was excited to read it and then got distracted and deleted it and never saw it again. But then now you sent another email a week later telling me about your Pinterest board. And I'm like, oh yeah, I wanted to see those pictures from her hike. Um, and then I'm in there now. So people get distracted. Um, people do not see everything you post. Um, so you wanna promote as much as you can to make sure um, people, people are getting the message. So networking. Um, so think about other small business owners that share some of your customers' interests. Um, you know, sometimes you can collab with other jewelry artists, but you might want to go outside of jewelry um, just so you're not, you know, competing with whoever you're collaborating with. Um, so, you know, if you are this nature-inspired jewelry brand, maybe there is a ceramics artist that also kind of has the same love for nature and hiking, and maybe they would want to share some of your content, and maybe you would want to share some of theirs. Um, a good way to build a relationship if, if it's not someone you've met in person or been able to talk to prior is to look through their content and see if your customers would be interested and offer to share. Um, getting cross links and backlinks to your website is only going to help you with it SEO and it's going to open up your audience. More people are going to be able to see you if your link to your website is also posted on the ceramics website. Um, so building this relationship where you can share back and forth, it also makes you have more content because now you can share other people's content. Um, so it's another thing you can post about, another thing you can talk about, another thing you can offer your customers that's adding value to your brand. So collabs and cross-promoting, cross you can act prior to creating the content um, is where you kind of would want to plan these. Um, so reach out to your network prior and you would create content for the purpose of collaborating and cross-promoting. Um, this would be something where all the parties agree that they are going to be posting um, this content on Instagram, they're gonna use it in their emails. Um, you know, a lot of people, especially starting out in the jewelry business and now with so many social media influencers, um, you know, you might get a DM that says, Hey, send me a free piece of jewelry and I'll post about it. That's not a collab. Um, that's you sending someone a free piece of jewelry. So unless that person is 
Lady Gaga or someone who has, you know, millions of followers and they promise to tag you in it. Um, I wouldn't do that. That's not a collab. You want to collaborate with people who are going to put as much effort into making the content and they are also going to get something out of it. So kind of make sure when you're collaborating that all parties are getting are putting an equal effort and getting um, that it's worth it for all of you. So um, collabs will take more time and planning. They can be a little bit more stressful, um, but it's worth it if you're if the content and your brand is going to be shown to a whole new audience. So here are a few examples of ways um, to collaborate with other small business owners. So one is just, you know, if you do have a blog, um, I like to do this and reach out to people in the jewelry community and get, you know, get their opinion on topics that I'm writing about. Um, and then I use their quotes um, in the blog. I usually will put a little photo of them and a bio and link to their website. Um, and this is something that you can do for your blog too. And a lot of times if you include somebody in your blog, include their expertise, include a quote from them and a link to their website, they will also share um, your blog. So that, that's getting more traffic for you. Um, another one is doing a big photo shoot, you know, where you get a, a local photographer, you get someone to do hair, do makeup, you get models, your jewelry's there. Maybe you're at a specific location. Maybe you're at a winery that's also gonna post about it. Um, I see these big collab photo shoots happening a lot, especially um, kind of in the bridal industry. It's kind of like a faux wedding shoot or a cute elopement shoot. Um, and if all of parties agree to promote and share across all their platforms, you know, if you have 10 different people, small businesses involved in this shoot, then you're going to be posted on 10 more pages. Um, so really think about how that can maximize your reach. Um, another thing is, doing like a local dine and shop guide, getting some, you know, local restaurants in on it, getting um, maybe even food trucks or local clothing designers, um, plus your jewelry and all getting together and building a local dine and shop that you can share and maybe other people, maybe your city wants to share, different things like that. So think of ways you can get people together um, that are going to have an invested interest, that are going to, um, you know, put in the effort to make this happen and then everybody kind of benefits from it. Um, obviously, if you work with someone and they don't hold up their end of the deal, they don't post on social, they don't tag you, they don't email you, it's kind of just a lesson learned and you wanna be forward. Um, depending on how many people you're working with and how much time and energy you're putting into it, um, sometimes you may want contracts for these kinds of things. So we went through the power of planning and we went through how to maximize your reach. Um, so now we're going to talk about reusing um, some of your older content or giving it like little recycles or facelifts um, that can really help you. So first I want to say, it is okay to reuse content. <laughs> if it is quality content and you took the time to create it, I think you should reuse it. I think you should promote it again. I think um, you want to make sure everybody sees it. Um, so just thinking about it, this, this wave necklace, maybe these are all different Instagram posts that were posted over maybe a two month period. So the first one, I'm scrolling through Instagram, I see it and I think, oh, that's a super cute wave necklace. Don't think of anything else though about it. The second time this artist posted it, I didn't even see it. Didn't even show up in my feed. I don't know where it went. Third time, again, I think, oh my gosh, I this wave necklace is so cute. My sister would totally love it. She lives by the beach, it's her thing. You know, okay, it's in my mind. Now, a few weeks later, a month later, I see it again. Now I finally click it, I finally purchase. It, it really does take someone seeing something multiple times to make the connection, to trust your brand, to finally go through and make a purchase. So it is totally okay to reuse content. So here are some tips for how to reuse content. So first of all, spread it out. Um, obviously you don't wanna post the same picture five times in a row, um, but also spreading it out doesn't mean it has to be months later. Um, so this picture of Stephanie from SL Studios, she was back on slide 15. So I'm guessing most of you didn't notice that in this, one, this presentation, I have now used this photo twice. Um, and if you did notice, 
I, I don't think it hindered um, your presentation experience. If it did, let me know in the comments. Um, but most likely you didn't notice, or you, if you did notice, it was in a collage format before, and now it's a bigger photo. Um, so I kind of used it in two ways. And um, like I said, most people didn't notice. And if you did notice, um, I don't, I don't think it would hinder your experience at all. And now you have a better, um, you know, view, a larger view of this photo. You can see the jewelry better. Um, and it might remind you to go check out her Instagram after this, which Stephanie is not promoting this at all, but <laughs> just wanted to give you it in context that you can spread it out, but it doesn't have to be four months later. You, you know, can post it a week later and, and different people are going to see it. Um, my only tip for if it's a social media post and you're going to reuse it is to update the copy. Um, I wouldn't repost the same image and have the have it say the exact same thing under it. You know, switch it up, say something different about it, um, just in case the person is seeing it for the second time. Um, so promoting an older blog with a different photo than before, kind of in my ten ways to promote a new blog post. Pull a different photo from the blog. Maybe when someone was scrolling through Instagram the first time, the first photo you posted about your blog didn't catch their eye, but now this one did. Um, so now they're going to read the copy under and click through and go to your blog. Um, emails, I think you can actually use the same content in emails and just switch up the copy a little and change the formatting. Um, especially with people looking at emails on their phone, a lot of times they might just open your email and see what's before the fold, what, what shows up before they scroll. So if you did post a piece of content that was further down in your email, maybe on last month's newsletter or the one before, maybe move it up this next time, um, you know, switch up the copy a little, but people that did not see it last time may notice it now. So recycle. Um, so this is kind of, you know, I think mostly blogs and Pinterest boards can kind of feel outdated, but if there's still quality content there and things that are relevant to your customer, um, it's totally worth just doing a little facelift, um, a little freshening up and then re-promoting again. So for Pinterest boards, you can change the cover, add a few more pins, upload a couple of your own photos, maybe delete some that aren't as relevant anymore. Um, and for blogs also, if, if, um, the content is still good overall, but there's a few things that need to be updated. You know, delete a couple of paragraphs, add a few ones in, maybe add in a new um, photo. Again, you can re-promote uh, and it'll feel like fresh content. If the blog or the Pinterest board is over six months old or year old, um, it's probably gonna feel like totally new content to your audience. Uh, most likely in the last six months, in the last year, you have gained a lot of new people that maybe haven't seen this at all. Um, so really, it, it's only old content to you. Your audience does not feel that. So by integrating content that you've already made um, and just you know recycling and using stuff, this is gonna, gonna reduce your stress. Build this into your marketing strategy. Um, when you think about your 12 month timeline, even when you break it down like into your quarter or month, you know, every month, try to reuse something. Something can be posted twice, um, or if, if, if you're still too nervous to post within the same month, maybe every quarter, um, you can put on your timeline that you're gonna you know, re-promote an older blog. So we're just gonna go through a recap of the, um, the three sections we kind of went through. So first, power planning. You have to have a plan. You have to have a marketing strategy. Um, you know, if you are a small business owner, you obviously want your business to grow. You want to make more money. You want to get more customers, a larger audience. Um, so you have to have a plan. Um, creating that that twelve month timeline, I really think it it will help you out. Um, and if you need um, kind of further details on that and more about a marketing strategy, I suggest you go and watch. Um, my presentation on building your marketing strategy. It's on our YouTube channel now. Um, it kind of breaks breaks down the timeline for you. Um, but I promise if you make a plan and you plan ahead, you're gonna get more accomplished. Um, I think when you don't have a, prior to having the plan, you kind of get frozen and overwhelmed with how much you have to do. Um, you know, people who have never owned a best business, never owned a small business, do not understand how many hats you wear, how many jobs you actually have. Um, 
and marketing manager, marketing strategist is, is one of them. Um, and you just don't want it to fall. Um, you just don't want to fall behind with it because that this is how you're going to grow your business. So maximize your reach. You know, if you're going to take the time to make a piece of content, make sure you promote it everywhere you can. All of your social media pages, your email list, your website, anywhere that you can control what is being posted, control it and post about your stuff. Um, and then also always reach out. You always want to be networking. You always um, want to be talking to other small business owners, bouncing ideas off of them and, you know, eventually start to collaborate and create content for cross, cross promotion. So reuse, recycle, reduce your stress. Um, it is okay to reuse your content. Um, when me and my husband owned our small jewelry business, I, for some reason, like could not handle reposting the same photo. Um, but it really is okay. And people do not notice. Um, all of your followers did not see it the first time you posted it, I promise. Um, and if they did, they're not going to be upset if you post it again. It's probably just going to remind them that, th that they did like that post. <laughs> um, so refreshing older content and promote again. Um, always look back in your archives. You know, you've, you've made quality stuff. Take the time to re-promote it. Um, and, and like I said, quality content should be, should be used regularly. If you did make this awesome um, you know, shopping guide for your city or something. It sh it, don't just share it once and never think about it again. It's probably still relevant six months later, a year later. Um, so make sure you reshare. So I love just this little quote or saying, work smarter, not harder. Um, by planning ahead, you are going to be working smarter. It's going to be harder for you if if you don't have a plan and every day you wake up and you're just stressed about what photos you need, what content you're promoting, what are you getting out there um, to your audience? So make a plan, be strategic with your time, promote, post and share everywhere you can. Remember it's okay to repost a photo, graphic blog, etc. Like I said, um, you're, you're probably the only one that notices or has, has any type of negative feeling about it. Um, and one thing I su can suggest uh, and suggest, to small business owners is look into social media scheduling services. Um, the two that I have I'm familiar with is tail tailwind and leader. I know there's other ones out there. Um, this, this will just help you save, help save you time. And I promise reduce your stress. <laughs> um, so we have a huge archive of marketing, um, articles on our, on our blog. So check it out. Um, there's a few I've wrote on there, but we also have a lot of great guests, um, bloggers. We have Liz Kantner from Stay Gold, um, Robin Kramer from Red Boot Consulting, um, Tracy Matthews from Flourish and Thrive. They've all wrote guest articles for us. Um, so go in and check them out. And that is the end of my presentation for today. I just want to let you know that this was recorded. If you registered, you will get the recording link later today. Um, we also will be getting this up on YouTube um, in the next couple of weeks, and it will have closed caption there. And you will also be able to fast forward and rewind, rewind there. Um, the replay link that you're going to get later today, unfortunately, will not have um, that capability. But in the next few weeks, we'll let you know once it's up on YouTube. So thank you so much. And Ashley, did we have um, any questions? We do have a few. Okay. Um, Someone was asking if you can rename photos on an iPhone, and I'm asking Janelle about that. Okay. Because I, I went into my iPhone and I couldn't find a way, but maybe she knows a secret. Okay. Yes. Yeah, I'm not fully familiar with that. I put everything on laptop or PC, um, but there should be. I know you can name your folders, um, but yeah, I'm not sure about about photos. So we'll let you know if we hear back from Janelle. Yeah. Um, okay. So the next question was. Julie was wondering what your favorite social media scheduling platform is. Um, do you have a favorite? I think we like Later. Mm -hmm. Don't you? Yeah, I like Later a little better than Tailwind. It depends on what features you're looking for, though. Um, definitely. I think they're, about, they're about the same cost, though, right? Pretty similar. They're mm -hmm. all pretty similar, just depending on what you want. And it's about 20 25 a month, right? They're not super expensive. 
I'm not sure we're on the annual plan. Okay, but you can do monthly. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes it's cheaper if you pay for a year, and obviously if you're investing in your business. But I think I even think the yearly was like 150. Yeah, it's, uh, cheap. it's not super expensive. So I really suggest doing that. I, I can't imagine trying to go on there every day and post stuff. Um, yeah. It will save you a lot of time. Um, so on that subject, how often should you post up to social media? Okay, so it really depends on your bandwidth. You know, if you're a you're running, it's just you, <laughs> and you make the jewelry, you respond to your emails, you do everything. I mean, what's realistic for you? Um, if you're using the social media scheduling platform, I think it's very realistic to post three times a week, um, if not more. Um, if you're not using the platform, you know, it, it's probably harder to do that, but um, it kind of just varies for everybody. But I'd say I get nervous if I go onto somebody's page and they haven't posted in over a week. Then I'm like, oh, that's weird. So I definitely think weekly at the bare, bare minimum. Um, but I would say three times a week, if not more. And, you know, utilize your stories too. I know with later you can post your, you can plan stories ahead of time too. Um, but yeah. Oh, I see Carol said, can you post too much? Um, maybe. <laughs> I mean, if you're posting like, you know, five plus posts a day, um, people might be, I don't know, irritated with it. And I just, I wouldn't suggest that unless, I mean, if you are just like overflowing with content, I mean, maybe, but you, I would, you know, if you have five posts and you're five pictures and you're super excited about it, like just spread them out over a week. Um, it's just going to give you more content and more time. Um, so yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, let's see here. So Carmen has kind of an interesting question. She's thinking about collaborating with a makeup artist who has a photographer. Mm -hmm. um, they're still trying to figure it out. Um, he wants 125 an hour, but she'll be using her own jewelry. Do you have some advice for kind of how to proceed with that sort of? So a lot of times, if it's if it's a photographer, depending on where people are at in their business, and I don't like to give away free services, and I can understand that the photographer, like that is his job. And so by him going, in doing that, it would be like him giving away a free service. I mean, obviously, Carmen, you are using your time, but you're not giving away your jewelry. You'll get that back. Um, you know, he has to take the photos and then edit them. So sometimes I do think it's okay um, to pay the photographer or cer certain people that are in the element. Um, it depends on where you are and what kind of photography he's doing for 125 an hour. I can't tell you you know, if you're in New York City versus somewhere else, I, I don't know the rates for photography, um, but I do get, I, I just want any small business from giving their services or product away for free. So I, I kind of get on a photographer's end why they would charge. You can always look around and see if there's one willing to do it for free or for less. Um, but if, if you really like that one, then it might be worth it. Okay, um, let's see here. And then also, do you have tips for how to kind of refresh your email list? Like get new subscribers or? I think so. I think that's what her question means. Carmen, if you want to go in there and clarify if this isn't correct, feel free to do that. Okay. But I think that's what she's saying. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, your email list in general kind of refreshes itself because if people aren't super into your emails, they're going to unsubscribe and don't ever get discouraged by unsubscribes. People do it for all different reasons. It does not mean they hated your content or they hate you or anything. Um, you know, they might have just signed up for too many. Okay, Carmen says, yes, it's so old. So your email list is old. I would maybe... Um, you know, you can use SurveyMonkey or some different things to like send out an email and kind of get some feedback from the people on your list. Just saying, hey, are you still interested in my jewelry? What kind of content are you interested in seeing from me? Um, like, let me know um, 
you know, if you're still here. I mean, most likely if they haven't unsubscribed from your list, um, I guess if you're not using a uh, email platform, they can't necessarily unsubscribe. But if, if you're just sending it from your Outlook or from your Gmail and you just have a list you put in there, um, I would just maybe send out an email like update your contact info or like, are you still interested in the subject line and kind of just see who is still still interested in that. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. Do you have any tips on product descriptions? Um, so for your um, descriptions on your website, I mean, I think you want to be as detailed as possible. Um, for product descriptions, too, you also kind of want to think about SEO. So what would the average person type into Google to search for that, prod that product? So maybe to you, you know, this is a 14 karat gold um, ring with a, a sapphire set in it. But maybe to somebody Googling, it might be an alternative engagement ring. Um, so sometimes you might just want to think of other ways people would think about your product and add it in description too. But then you also want to be obviously as informative, as descriptive as you can, you know, the size of the ring, the weight of the ring, the metal, the stone, the size of all of that, um, be specific. Mm -hmm. Definitely. You want to make sure it's easy for a beginner person who's just searching for something interesting. Yes. Um, there's a few questions coming in about emails. So kind of how to get subscribers and then like a good platform for beginners, especially? Um, okay, so I see a Rosalind's question. So yeah, with in-person, I mean, a lot of people at shows would have people sign up for the email list there. Um, now you kind of have to use your social, social platforms to get people to sign up for your email. Um, so, you know, putting a link to subscribe to your email, or even if you're not on a platform yet, um, just saying, DM me your email if you wanna be added to my list, or, you know, give them an incentive to to get for them to give you their email like hey i'm gonna be running a giveaway next month or i have a new collection dropping on friday if you're on my email list you'll get notified first um, and then say shoot me a dm with your email um, those are great ways to kind of get emails um, now through social and i think just giving them a little incentive to give to have them give you their email um, is a good idea um, and then I see Kim asked about a good platform for email to start with. I think MailChimp's super easy to use and work with. Um, and then depending on how big your list is, is how much they charge you. Um, so it's, you know, if you only have 100 people on your list, it is going to, um, it's not going to be very expensive at all. And they give you these beautiful templates and you can just drop, drop in your, your photos and stuff. It's, it's really easy to work with. Definitely. And then how about some tips for getting social media followers? Engage. <laughs> uh, you're, you have to spend so much time on there. Um, you know, you're going to want to search hashtags that you think potential customers would be following. Go on their pages, comment on, start conversations with them, comment on, you know, what they're doing. Um, you need to be posting as much as possible, utilizing the hashtags to um, sharing your content. See, in the beginning, collabs can be everything. If, if you know another um, small business that wants to collab with you and post about you, share about you, any customers that you currently have, um, you know, maybe do a little giveaway or an incentive like, hey, post a picture in a piece of my jewelry and tag me, you'll be entered to get, you know, free shipping on your next order or whatever it is. Um, just trying to um, entice people, you know, to share your stuff and so you can get a bigger audience. Yeah, and then, so back to email real quick. Yeah. Uh, do you know much about Constant Contact? Is MailChimp better than that or which ones? I don't know Constant Contact. Um, I can't remember off the top of my head, I know, Corky Bolton from Metalsmith Society suggested a email platform. Do you remember what, the, what that was, Ashley? From CBS? Yeah. Oh, there was another one. I can't remember now, though. There's a lot out there. I haven't used Constant Contact, um, so I don't have 
a feeling either way on that. Um, if you email me at webinars <laughs> at housewebbe.com, I can email you the one that Corky Bolton, Julia said Corky, Corky Bolton from Metalsmith Society um, did a presentation for us at the Jewelry Business Forum. And she suggested an email platform, but I cannot remember the name of it right now. Um, and it was a really beautiful thing. Yeah, I remember that now because we were looking into it. Um, I don't remember the name though. Okay. Um, Julia is asking <clears throat> for social media specifically, is outsourcing to a local expert worth a worthwhile expense, especially for a new business? Yes, it can be. Um, if you are signing the right contract and you're getting everything you want from it, um, you know, you just need to do, do you have the extra money to pay someone to do that? I mean, getting a, um, getting something like that off of your plate as a small business owner, I think can help you out a lot. So yeah, I think paying somebody to do it can be really smart. Um, you just want to make sure, you know, you're vetting the person you've seen what they've done before. You have a really good contract and they are following through with it. Um, and I would also say like start contracts short, like not too short, like you'd probably need at least three months or so to see any type of effect. Ooh, Flowdesk, Julia. That's yeah. right. Flowdesk is the one that Corky recommended. I don't have experience with it, but it looked really beautiful and I get her Metal Smith Society emails and they, I like them. So I would suggest Flowdesk or MailChimp. Um, and back to paying for social media help. Yes, I suggest it. Don't do a super long contract at first. Um, and then just, and, but make sure it's a detailed contract. 